So back to the spectroscope slits. This is the blade that I made for experimental purposes. I sort of polished it on the on this surface here to um, hopefully ultimately make it uh, reflective so that I can uh, do guiding from it. Um, this is the blade, the actual edge that was that was um, um, lapped. Now what I need to do is make a longer version of that. So. Um, to go on the other side, because the other side needs to be a bit longer. So I've got some dimensions worked out. I'm just going to um, uh, cut one of these and um, and then machine it. What we're using is, I bought a load of uh, stainless steel here. I got this from uh, uh, the Auto Jumble, my favourite uh, haunt, the first Saturday of every month in Ruffeth. Um And somebody was selling these strips here. I think I paid 50p for, um, I think I've got about half a dozen or something. Of these stainless steel strips and I thought well those may well come in handy well they have come in handy so this is this ultimately if you if you cut it and sort of machine it square and everything and polish it, it looks more like that so uh, just stainless steel I've got enough there to make um, plenty of spectroscope slits blades so um, let me um, set up we'll chop one up and machine it and, and we'll go um, about polishing it. I've got to make some holes in it as well, a couple of holes. I've got all the dimensions sorted out so. Right, let's um, let's mark this up just uh, so we can cut it out. I think uh, we'll just uh, probably saw it so stick some uh, some of that goop on and uh, rather than uh, putting the brush back into the pot of uh, layout blue. What I tend to do is just um, get a paper towel and just wipe off the excess like that and then let it dry and within half an hour or so it's dried and you just do that and it crisps up the brush again. So because if you keep it in the pot they all go horrible and seem to fall apart. This is a, just a, a hog hair um, artist brush but actually it does a really nice job. They're only cheap from uh, these sorts of places. I think that's a fancy Winsor & Newton one but uh, you can, you can get away with a cheap one. So this is just um, curing. Uh, come on. So I've got to cut the lengthwise. So I've just set my uh, my um, calipers for uh, 50 thou over the width I want because I'm going to saw saw them just with a hacksaw because um, my band saw. I've got one of those um, horizontal band saws which you can use in the vertical position but you have to screw this sort of plate on and uh, to be honest um, well, by the time I've done that I might as well just cut it with a hacksaw um, it's just as easy and just as quick this, die, this uh, layout blue nearly done, nearly nearly cured right so it's cured enough let me just run that so that's set for 50 thou bigger I'm just going to put a basic line on there just for me to saw up to he says there we go not working terribly well, is it? But uh, it's enough for a saw mark. Right, so there you go. You can see the saw mark. So I'll uh, saw that first. Uh, how long does it want to be? Um, one four ten. Uh, one uh, one point four one. So if we do it one point, what we're going to do it one point four. We'll do it another sort of ten thou also over, and we'll just make sure we cut it carefully. So let's just mark that up as well, just so that we know where where we're going. Right, there we go. So it's just marked out there just to saw it. So let's get that piece that packer piece back. So we've got a flat piece now and put that that's better look. That's got more more meat. And let's move that up there so we're supporting it. Right, now we've got a flat piece, we can bang that down. Make sure that, yep, that's flat on the parallel now. Let's just nip it up slightly. Yep, there we go. So let's um, make that parallel to the other side and then we'll do the ends. So let's get that down. To that. There we are, that's about right. Off we go. That's better. 
not making that dreadful noise now. I don't think I'm actually touching there now, so just a bit of feed on the knee. All I do is just feed in the knee. I'm only going to do a couple of thousand at a time, usually because it's, uh, it's obviously just a thin piece of stainless. It's, uh, I don't want to put huge great cut on because it's quite got a bit of flexibility in it. Uh, not quite cleaned up yet, we're nearly there, but not quite. I don't know whether you guys can see from there, but uh, it's not quite getting the other end yet. Just a smidge more. I think that's got it right the way down now. So that's that bit done. Let's just uh, make sure there. Yeah, that's done. Right, pull up. Just uh, turn that up. I'll be polishing all this on the on the. Uh, on the lapping paper, so uh, these rough edges will all get sorted out fairly quickly. I'm just doing this so it doesn't, um, you know, uh, cockle in the in the vise. So what I'm going to do now is clamp it this way on and just do these ends to the square to the to the work. That would probably be the best way, like that, I reckon. A 91, which is there. Let's have a quick check. That looks right to me. So let's um, let's drill a hole there. Pilot it with the, uh, with the pilot drill, and I need a 3.1 mil hole for clearance for three mil, which over here, 3.1. There we go, 3.1. Let's speed up a bit. Into stainless, our favourite. Let's just put a bit of. Uh, a little bit of a help on there. Come on. It's going to come out in a big splurt any minute. Here we go. Just put a bit of uh, old Allen anchor lube on. With it being stainless, it does just help a little bit. There we go. That's that hole. So 591 in the other direction. So let's go back this way, we've unlocked the table. Four, five, overshot again, five, 91, there we go. Lock the table down, that's in the right place. I'm just going to uh, use the old uh, centering drill because uh, it does give you more accurate uh, spot. That uh, looks right to me. So there's my centre. This is a, as you can see, a, a 60 degree uh, spotting drill, which means that when the when this drill, which is also 60 degree, goes in there, it doesn't have to hunt around like it does if you use a, um, some other like uh, centre drills and stuff. Um, they, they actually work a lot better. So let's just get this 3.1 in here. Okay, I'll just have a spot of magic, magic uh, anchor lube. Come on, well, that should do it. A little double do you, as they say. There we are, and that's the steam, not smoke. When you use anchor lube, you just get steam. It's water based. So that's that. Put that back in the tin before I lose it. And uh, let's go and uh, clean that up and try it for size. 
So now that we've got the um, the slit, the blade mounted on the spectroscope, um, I'm going to show you um, how I'm going to try and calibrate the the dial. Although I have I have actually got to refine that, but uh, what I wanted to show you is how I'm going to measure such a small gap. Um, now, the easiest way to do it is to show you this this diagram here. Um, what we're going to do, I don't know if you can actually see. Uh, what we've got set up here, but um, down here um, we have a laser. Um, you'll see that if I press that, there's a laser coming on. Um, and the laser is pointing at the slit. So this is my spectroscope slit. This is all clamped down to my surface plate. Um, the um, Let me just tighten that up. Hang on a minute. Yeah, so this is our, our laser here. That's pointing at my slit, which is mounted on, is clamped to my surface plate down here. I've then got, there's a metre rule here, so I've got a metre straight edge laying across my surface plate. And at the end of it I've got a white card, which is the target. So the laser is going to shine through the gap, or through the slit, and it's going to project onto the, um, the end there. So what, what we've got here um, is an explanation of how this is going to work. So here's my laser, here's my uh, slit, um, and here's the target. Now what happens is, the laser, um, the slit uh, of the laser, uh, basically, the, the, the light coming from the laser behaves as, as a wave, and because of the wave effect, you get ref uh, refraction um, uh, through the slit, and the effect of that is to show these interference patterns. So what you get is a series of dot, uh, dots and dashes on this card. Um, all to do with the way that wave, the, the wave motion of light works through narrow gaps. Um, so rather than getting one spot of light, you get multiple spots of light. Now, the distance between those, uh, those um, the dark bits, as you can see there, is actually related to the, the actual slit width, the width of the slit. And there's a simple calculation down here for some maths and stuff. Um, but basically, if I measure that in millimetres, um, I divide, because I'm using a green laser, it's got 532 nanometres. Um, the, the, um, the, the, the wavelength of this green laser is 532 nanometres. Using that information, I can calculate the width of that slit. It's a very simple calculation, in fact. It's actually um, 1596 divided by that distance, which is the distance between each of the black uh, the dark lines in the interference pattern that we'll get on the on the target. So what I'm actually going to do, well let me just um, show you in close some of the uh, bits of this. Um, so that's the um, that's my actual target and if I shine the laser you'll see that the laser is um, aimed at the slit there and then the target um, is is here and if I just show you, you should see you should see the lay the interference lines on there. Now what I'll do is I'll stand you up over here so you're looking at the target and hopefully you're going to see these lines. I'm going to turn the lights out now. At that point, that's better. I don't know that you can see that anymore. And also, what's also happening here? Now you can see the effects of the fact that I've got a decent slit on one side and not on the other that um, I'm getting well I don't know whether that's to do with that actually I'll shut up I'm speculating now let me measure that oh god I keep doing that That's about six mil, so 1596 divided by divided by six is yeah. So so that when they're close together, then what we're looking at when they're close together, we're looking at a a wide gap, and the further apart they go the narrower the gap. So if I can, that's about the limit I can get to there. 
and no measuring. Now, as I say, the slit's very poor quality now, but um, that's about we? there to there is about 23. 23, so 1596 divided by 23, so that's only 70 microns. So I've got a way to go before I can get them really, really close. But anyway, the principle of what I'm showing you here is that this allows you to measure those very, very small gaps. Uh, you should have um, been able to see the basic principle of, of um, this mechanism and how um, by um, twiddling the, uh, the, um, the slit here, I can measure using those interference patterns very accurately the, um, the width of the slit. And um, as a result of that, um, I should have a reasonable idea of what the separation is. So the next step uh, to test the quality of the blades, because I'm going to start polishing the blades now, in order to uh, test the quality, I'm going to build a basic spectroscope around the slit. I'm going to have a telescope here which will be providing the light, which at the moment is being provided by the laser. I'm then going to have a collimator, and I've got a couple of different optics. This is an old um, doublet from a, from a pair of binoculars, but um, um, I've got a variety of devices like this which I will use as a as a uh, collimator for the for the um, the light coming from the slit, um, I'll then have a a an actual uh, grating a spectra a grating on the back of here, and ultimately a CCD camera to pick up the spectra. And from there, we should be able to see the quality of the of the slits um, um, in, in by looking at the quality of the spectra that they produce. So that's the next step.